JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week March the 28th until April the 1st. I am Haralambos Pissoros, Head of Research here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, um, the calendar is lighter this week than uh, it was last week, but we do get important uh, releases, although we don't have any central bank decisions. We do get the US NFPs and Eurozone's pre pre preliminary CPIs um, for the month of March. Those are the main ones, the, the ones that will enter the spotlight in our view. But let's take, th let's, uh, take uh, things from the beginning. Today there are uh, no noteworthy indicators on the agenda. The only event worth mentioning is a speech by Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey. Now, at their latest gathering, Bank of England officials decided to hike interest rates by another 25 basis points via an 8 to 1 voting, with the descender calling for no increase at all. Now, remember that at the February gathering, officials lifted rates by 25 basis points as well, but the vote was 5 to 4 with the descenders calling for a 50 basis points increase. So, we need to compare those and uh, if we do that, this means that the most recent uh, decision, the last one, reveal, suggested a more cautious approach by policymakers and raised questions as to whether they will indeed proceed as aggressive as the market has been pricing in, heading into that uh, last gathering. Now, uh, last week, data showed that both the headline and core CPI rates accelerated by more than anticipated in February, which may have revived the expectations uh, that the Bank of England may need to act uh, more quickly. Indeed, according to the UK overnight index swaps forward uh, yield curve, market participants added back to their bets and they are again uh, nearly pricing in uh, uh, six more quarter point uh, rate hikes by the end of the year. Now, with all that in mind, it will be interesting to see whether Bailey's comments will add credence, credence to that view. And if so, uh, this could uh, support, prove supportive for the British pound. Now, on Tuesday, during the Asian session, we get Japan's employment data for February with the unemployment rate expected to have held steady at 2.8%, as well as the summary of opinions from last week's Bank of Japan gathering. We don't expect the summary to result, uh, to result in any fireworks, and this is because the Bank of Japan has, has been maintaining its extra loose monetary policy without proceeding with any bold changes lately. With other major central banks raising interest rates and expected to deliver many more by the end of the year, the monetary policy divergence between the Bank of Japan and those banks is likely to continue widening, which means more weakness for the Japanese yen. As uh, for the rest of the day, we get Germany's retail sales for February, the US Conference Board Consumer Confidence Index for March, and the US JOLTS job openings uh, for February. Now on Wednesday, although not uh, major market movers, the most important releases to monitor are Germany's preliminary CPIs and the US ADP employment report, uh, both for the month of March. In Germany, both the CPI and the HICP rates are expected to have continued climbing north. 
Specifically, they are expected to rise to 6.1 and 6.4% year over year from 5.1 and 5.5% respectively, which could mean that Eurozone's rates, at least the headline one due out on Friday, may follow suit. As for the US's ADP report, the forecast suggests that the private sector has gained 438,000 jobs in March after adding 475,000 in February. This could raise some speculation that the NFPs due out on Friday may also come in below their February print. Indeed, the forecast is for the NFPs to have slowed to 475,000 from 678,000. But having said all that, though, we need to remind you that the ADP number is not a reliable predictor of the NFPs. And thus, we will not form an official opinion about the Fed's and the dollar's future course based on uh, the ADP result. As uh, for the rest of Wednesday's data, during the Asian trading, Japan's retail sales for February are forecast to have slid 0.3% uh, year over year after expanding 1.1% in January. New Zealand's ANZ Business Confidence Index for March is also coming out, but no forecast is currently available. Later in the day, from the US, besides the ADP report, we also get the final GDP for the fourth quarter, with the forecast pointing to a fractional upside revision to 7.1% quarter over quarter, a seasonally adjusted annual rate from uh, 7%. Now, on uh, Thursday, uh, Japan's preliminary industrial production for, for February is expected to reveal a rebound to 0.5% month over month from uh, minus 0.8%. The Japanese uh, PMIs for March are also to be released, but no forecast is currently available. However, with several cities entering lockdowns due to accelerating uh, spreading of the coronavirus, we see the risks are still to the downside. This could initially hurt currencies of countries which have uh, close trade ties with China, the likes of, uh, of Australia and uh, New Zealand. However, with uh, Chinese officials pledged to take all the necessary measures to support the economy and also taking into account the latest recovery in the broader market sentiment, we will treat uh, any, any setbacks in, uh, in the Aussie and the Kiwi as uh, corrective moves before uh, before uh, before uh, the next Lex uh, North. Later in the day, we get the UK final GDP for uh, the fourth quarter, which is expected to confirm its preliminary estimate of one percent quarter. The German one is expected to have held steady at five percent, while Eurozone's uh, is forecast to have ticked down to six point seven percent from six point eight percent. From the U.S., we have the personal uh, income and spending data for February, as well as the core PC index for the month, which is a Fed's uh, favorite inflation metric. Personal income is expected to have risen 0.5% month over month after stagnating in January, while spending is forecast to have slowed to 0.5% month over month from 2.1%. No forecast is available for the core PC index, but bearing in mind that the core CPI uh, rose to uh, rose to 6.4 percent year over year from 6 percent, we would consider the risk uh, still to the upside. However, at this point, we need to point out that although it is the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, the core PC index is not a major market mover, and this is because we get the CPIs well well in advance. Now, finally, on Friday, the spotlight is likely to fall on Eurozone's preliminary CPIs for March, as well as the U.S. employment report for the month. Getting the ball rolling with uh, Eurozone CPIs, the headline rate is forecast to have climbed to 6.5% from 5.9% year over year, while the HICP rate excluding energy and food is anticipated to have risen to 3.3% from 2.9%. The main message we, get, we got from the latest ECB meeting is that officials we are more concerned over high inflation than the effects of the war in Ukraine on the euro area economy. However, last uh, week, ECB President Christine Lagarde warned that the Fed and the ECB may move out of uh, sync in the foreseeable future 
as the war has vastly different effects on their economies. Her remarks raised questions as to whether officials will continue paying more attention to inflation and thereby decide uh, to lift uh, rates uh, to lift rates later this year. However, further acceleration in inflation could allow market participants to keep some of their hike bets on the table and thereby support uh, the euro at least uh, temporarily. Temporarily, excuse me. Now, passing the ball to the U.S. Uh, and the employment data, non-farm payrolls are expected to have slowed to 475,000 from 678,000 in February, while the unemployment rate is forecast to have ticked down to 3.7% from 3.8%. Average hourly earnings are expected to have accelerated to 5.5% year over year from 5.1% which is a sign of inflation um, keep accelerating in, in, in the next couple of months. In our view, a combination of declining unemployment rate and accelerating wages adds validity to the view that the Fed may need to lift rates even more aggressively than previously thought, and thereby it could, uh, and it could thereby support uh, the U.S. dollar. At its last, last meeting, uh, the committee hiked rates by 25 basis points with the updated dot plot pointing um, to six more quarter point increases by the end of the year. That said, last week, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said that uh, they could use larger uh, liftoffs if uh, needed, something which encouraged market participants to assign a nearly 70% chance for a 50 basis points at the upcoming gathering and to see uh, the federal funds uh, rate nearly hitting 2.5% by the end of the year. All this uh, is according to the CME Fed Watch tool and the yield curve of the Fed Fund futures. Now, as for the rest of Friday's events, during the Asian session, Japan's Tankan survey for the first quarter is coming out, and the forecasts uh, suggest uh, that both the large, ma the large manufacturers and uh, non-manufacturers uh, indices um, have declined during the quarter. Later, during the European trading, Switzerland CPI for March is expected to have inched up to 2.4% year-over-year from 2.2%. Although this is further above the SNB's objective of 2%, the rate is well behind uh, those of uh, most other major economies, and thus we don't believe that it will tempt policymakers to, uh, in, in, uh, to tighten uh, uh, their, uh, their monetary policy stance. The final manufacturing PMIs uh, for March from the Eurozone, the UK and the US, as well as the ISM manufacturing index for the month, are also due to be released. The final market prints are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates, and the ISM index is forecast to have held steady at 58.6. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week, and I'm looking forward to... Uh, uh seeing you here again i would say next monday but um there will be no weekly market outlook webinar on the 4th and 11th of uh, on the uh, of april so um i wish you a great week and i hope i see you here for a weekly webinar on april the 18th However, if you are interested in more detailed frequent analysis, you can still find me here uh, during the rest of this week, from Tuesday to Friday on our YouTube channel, at around between 8 and 9 a.m. GMT. So, goodbye to all, and have a great uh, rest of the week. JFT, just fair and direct.